So yeah, um, so I'm Kyle Tut, co-founder and CEO of Pinata. And with me, I also have Matt Ober, co-founder and CTO of Pinata. And we are the easiest way to use IPFS. At our core, Pinata is a pinning platform for the IPFS network. What this means is that we underpin the data for many of your favorite decentralized applications built with IPFS. And for those that uh, aren't aware, the majority of decentral applications uh, do actually use IPFS. The reason for this is that blockchains, any blockchain and IPFS are a perfect complement to each other. This is because blockchains are really bad at storing large amounts of data. So what your favorite decentralized application does is store that data off chain on IPFS. They use IPFS because legacy methods such as AWS can't verify and secure data like IPFS can. Legacy systems are mutable. While IPFS is immutable. Without this immutability, uh, data verification from IPFS, you end up with a super verifiable on-chain data pointing to super unverifiable off-chain data. This completely defeats the purpose of blockchains in the first place. Now, the reason why everyone uses us to underpin their applications is because we come with the benefits of IPFS while being really, really easy to use. From crypto musicians and artists to software developers and gamers, anyone can easily integrate, uh, their, integrate us into their application. Now, they like us because we are fast. Uh, give me a moment here, moving my screen around. Um, so we make sure to meet the speed demands of anyone moving data globally, whether it's the front end for DeFi applications or the latest music single releases an audio NFT. Pinata can rise to any occasion. Finally, they love us because we are reliable, underpinning their applications 24 seven. So let's talk more about our users. We have over 6,500 developers and creators that are building with Pinata with over 1.3 million pins on our system. These developers and creators are building anything and everything with Pinata. Blockchain applications use Pinata for managing their off-chain data. Uh, crypto creators, artists, musicians, and games use us to create their NFTs. And DeFi applications use us for their, for their front ends, token lists, and more. When I said we underpin your favorite decentral app decentralized application, I truly do mean that we underpin your favorite decentralized application. And all of this is happening because of one really special concept that Protocol Labs has pioneered at the network level. When you upload data to IPFS, it's considered, it's considered a pin. Um, and this pin is uh, considered a, a CID or a content identifier that is associated with it. CIDs identify data by the data itself instead of where it is stored, such as in uh, you know, an IP address. And let's see, hold on, give me a second. Skipped ahead a little bit. Uh, now, for example, imagine I represent uh, a piece of data. The legacy web would name me and identify me by where I live. In this case, Omaha, Nebraska, and not by my name, Kyle Tut. Before I lived in Omaha, I lived in Fargo, North Dakota. So when I lived there, you would identify me as Fargo, North Dakota. With the way the legacy web works, every time I move, my name changes. And additionally, there's a limitless number of people uh, that can be me. So like Matt, o Matt Ober. They just have to move basically to wherever I am, and then they can share the same exact identity as mine. This is how the legacy web works. This absolutely does not work when building decentralized applications because you need some way to verify that the data referenced off chain was immutable and never changed no matter where it is in the world. Now with IPFS, my immutable name or CID as a piece of data is always going to be Kyle Tut, no matter where I live and what I'm doing. And you can verify that I'm Kyle Tut because I'm the only piece of data ever created with this name. Whether I'm in Omaha, New York City, or even the Bay Area, I'm always going to be verifiably Kyle Tut to whomever needs to identify me. 
This is actually quite intuitive for non-technical people. And that is what makes the concept of CID so special. It's how non-technical people want to interact with and move their data. And it doesn't require any learning curve to make that data immutable. What this means is that with CIDs, we are democratizing the cloud for non-technical people. IPFS is allowing everyone the ability to harness the power of the cloud to communicate with data in a verifiable and reliable way. In a line starting with the personal computer revolution, connecting to the internet revolution, mobilizing with the iPhone revolution, and scaling with the cloud revolution, CIDs are the technical, technical advancement needed to create the next logical advancement in computing to democratize the data within the clouds to the masses. And with that democratization of the cloud to the masses, we will need better and more local ways to store the ensuing explosion of data. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Matt Ober. Um, thanks, Kyle, for going over the kind of the benefits of content addressable storage and uh, importantly, CIDs. We'll talk a little bit about this when we go through Filecoin and how that's going to fit into Pinata's roadmap going uh, forward in the future for us. So to start off with, uh, as I'm sure you're all aware, Filecoin is a new decentralized storage layer that exists. Uh, since Pinata is already building on top of IPFS as a decentralized storage layer, uh, Filecoin is actually going to fit very well uh, with IPFS in a complementary manner. So Filecoin allows us to do three things. It allows us to store data in a more decentralized manner. It allows us to store long-term data more uh, cost-effectively. And then it also allows us to prove to our users that data is being stored through cryptography and all of the fun uh, proofs that Filecoin has baked into its, its protocol. So to understand how Filecoin is going to fit into the Pinata ecosystem, it's going to help to think of IPFS and Filecoin as two separate layers of a complementary stack. So on the top, we have the speed layer, and this is where Pinata currently exists and is storing all of your content on IPFS. IPFS is going to be really good for data that needs to be quickly retrievable in a decentralized and content addressable manner. But uh, not, all, not all data needs to be quickly retrievable. Some data is meant for long-term storage or archival storage, as Juan just talked about in the previous talk. And this is where Filecoin comes into the picture for us. With Filecoin, Pinata is gonna be able to offer a decentralized data archival layer in addition to our speed layer that currently exists with IPFS. So two different layers for two different use cases. So the first feature that Pinata is gonna be releasing with this new archival layer is going to be called Pinata Snapshot. The concept of data snapshots should be familiar to many people in the software space. Uh, when you have data that's important to you, you wanna make sure that this data is backed up. And you wanna make sure uh, the more data storage layers you have, the more reliable and secure your data is in the event of any outage. So uh, we are going to provide this functionality by taking a snapshot of your pin set at a point in time and then backing that up, uh, that snapshot to the Filecoin network. So because that data is being stored on Filecoin and Filecoin is a decentralized network of global miners, this is gonna add another layer of resilience to our users' data. And most importantly, this layer isn't reliant on us as a company. So if the Pinata team gets abducted by aliens one day and the entire company ceases to exist, you will still be able to access your, your pin set from the Filecoin network because you will have that deal ID uh, that references your data on the Filecoin chain. So if we do get abducted by aliens, just take that deal ID and then go grab your content from the Filecoin network, at which point you can, uh, you can restore it to IPFS nodes. So here's a sneak preview of what this uh, feature is gonna look like. Users that are currently familiar with Pinata uh, will recognize the user uh, experience and the patterns here. Users will have two options for creating snapshots. They can either manually create a snapshot anytime they want, or they can enable automated snapshots to occur on a reoccurring basis. Snapshots in their current status will appear in a table-like manner 
along with details about the snapshot. And then for users who are looking for a deeper look into their snapshots, uh, where they're specifically stored in the file or coin network, such as deal information, uh, on-chain data, we, access, we give them access to that as well via our snapshot details pop up here. And then for those of you that are doing developer work, all of this also is available via the API. So um, as you can see here, we do have two separate shards here for this, this one snapshot uh, because we wanna make sure that everything fits on to a file coin sector. We want to limit things to 20 gigabytes in size to make sure they nicely fit. So uh, pin sets that are larger than this, we're gonna separate them out into what we're calling shards. And with this, pay uh, special attention to the column called the IPLD CID. This is where the magic is gonna be happening within Pinata Snapshots. Because all of our data is stored across this network of global nodes, uh, and because again, Filecoin has a maximum sector size, taking snapshots is gonna require a little bit of a unique approach. So let me explain this a little bit here. All of your content on IPFS is broken up into multiple chunks, uh, also referred to as blocks. Uh, this, this system is called IPLD, and you can also read about this on the uh, Protocol Labs documentation. So each of your uh, pieces of content has its own content identifier for it, and this is determined based on the blocks that make up that content. The CID that you receive when adding content to IPFS is usually the, gonna be the CID for the root block of your content. And its job is to basically link to all the other blocks of data that combine together, create that whole piece of content uh, that you're gonna be, wanna be retrieving from the, from the IPFS network. So what we do here, uh, we exploit this a little bit uh, further. Similarly to how a piece of content's root block links to all of your smaller blocks of data that it's composed of, when we create a snapshot of your pin set, we're gonna create a root block that links to all of the root blocks for your individual pins. So we're gonna be looping through your entire pin set and grabbing all of the root CIDs for your files. And then we're gonna make one block that links to all of them. And if your pin set is over 20 gigabytes in size, Again, we're gonna create these multiple individual shards of your pin set uh, to make sure everything fits on Filecoin nicely. So the reason we do this is because we wanna uh, have an easy way to get this content onto the Filecoin network. The Filecoin Lotus client is natively running an IPFS node as a part of it. And because that's the case, uh, what we do then is we take that root site CID for the shards, we give it to Lotus, and it's gonna go grab that content from all of our nodes that exist on the IPFS network with it. Once Lotus has that content, it's gonna throw that content onto the Filecoin network. So once that's there, everything gets sealed up. We have your content safely secured on the Filecoin network, and it can be easily retrievable uh, from the Filecoin network at any point in time. Easy enough, right? So uh, now that we're able to understand a little bit about Pinata and IPFS and understand how uh, we're integrating Filecoin and a little bit of the technical things underneath, uh, hopefully you enjoyed the presentation and thank you. Okay. Uh, it looks like we have a question where it says, what is the plan for educate, educating users about Filecoin design? Uh, say we are abducted, will our users understand how to ponder host their data in our absence? Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, so if you're familiar with Pinata, you know that we, uh, we, we really place a high priority on documentation. Um, similarly to our current IPFS system, um, all of our stuff with the Filecoin snapshotting feature is gonna be heavily documented. So we wanna make sure that you feel comfortable knowing that if we ever you know, get abducted, you're gonna have documentation available there for you on how to retrieve uh, that content. Um, yeah, and then because we have the internet archive, even if the Pinata network uh, website explodes, that should be still available for, for uh, viewing somewhere, covering all the bases there. <laughs> we have a question that asks, uh, is there a link to an example? Um, right now, this is still being developed. Uh, we're working on it. We were working on it through the test network. Um, so it is a still in developed feature right now. You should see it coming out here in the near future. So 
Uh, once that comes out, we'll have blog posts linking to how to utilize it. Uh, and then going over examples of how you can utilize it with say our, both our GUI and our API. Awesome, Matt and Kyle, thank you so much.